Did you know there's been over 5,000 different US patents for mousetraps? Well, today for Mousetrap Monday, we're gonna test out the all-time rarest and craziest mousetrap design that I've ever seen. If you watch my channel, you know I like testing out old mousetrap designs, but some of them are so rare and valuable, I could never buy them. Instead, I have to make them based off the patent drawings. Here's an example, shaped like a rat. It has a spring-loaded tail that's wind set. You put the bait in here. The rat comes along, pushes the trigger, and these two harpoons shoot out the mousetrap eyes. That's a pretty wacky design, but today we're gonna test out one that's even crazier. Here's some other mousetraps I had fun building. These are guillotine mousetraps from the 17 and 1800s. The mouse goes in there, takes the bait, and a blade slams down on the mouse's neck. I really enjoy making each piece of the mousetrap and recreating mousetrap history. Well, recently I got a brand new mousetrap patent book and I was surprised to see what was on the cover. Here's my book with page after page of different trap patent numbers listed by year. These are 1902 and here's where 1903 starts. And on this side, it has patent drawings. Here's the patent drawings for that rat shaped trap with the spring loaded harpoons that shoot out the eyes. And on the cover is the all time craziest mouse trap ever invented. It's shaped like an elephant, has a spring loaded trunk that slams down on the mouse. And on the tip is a set of jaws that grab the mouse's body. It was first patented on December 11th, 1883, and I can't wait to make a working model. This is so rare, I don't even know if this mousetrap was ever made. So the only way to test it out is to print out the patent drawings and then go to the shop and make each piece and put the trap together. Inside this piece of firewood, there's an elephant shaped mousetrap. We just need to carve it. I'm out here in my firewood shed and I had a lot of wood to choose from. There was fir, black locust, cherry, and maple. This is big leaf maple from a tree that fell down in my yard last year. It's well seasoned, so let's go to the shop and shape this into an elephant.
Well, we still have a long way to go with more sanding and putting in more detail, but for now, the wooden body for this elephant is coming along nicely. We have tusks, we have a trunk that will go up and down, and the main body here. But originally, the patent plans call for this mousetrap to be made out of cast metal. Two halves held together with a screw right there, and inside it's hollow to fit the mechanics of the mousetrap, the springs and levers. So what I have to do now is cut this mousetrap in half. We're going to saw the elephant right down the middle and carve it out. Now I really don't want to mess this up and start back from square one. So we'll be very careful and chop our elephant in half. Well, we did the hard part and cut the elephant in half. Now we need to hollow out the center to make room for the trigger, the springs, the levers. Then we'll put the elephant back together with a screw right there. So here's all the metal pieces I'm gonna use to finish our mouse trap. We have two springs, a screw, some wire, a nail for pins, and this metal rod I'm gonna shape into the jaws. If you look at the patent drawings, there's two spring-loaded mechanical components. One is triggered when the mouse disturbs the bait box connected to the tusks. This will cause the elephant's trunk to come slamming down. The other is a pair of spring-loaded metal jaws connected to the tip of the trunk that will grab the mouse's body. Now I'm gonna have to do a lot of shaping of the metal pieces to make this trigger system work. Everything is gonna need to fit together. We'll bend the wire. I'm gonna heat up the metal, hammer it flat, and then grind the metal jaws to shape. I'm also going to have to carve out the wood to make everything fit and we'll secure everything together with a screw. Okay, I've made all the pieces for our trap and I have to say, reproducing the mechanical components has been an absolute nightmare. The design is way too complicated and I don't see how we're ever going to catch a mouse with it. We have the jaws on the tip of the trunk with a spring that will fit in the hole right there. We'll put those on later. Inside the trap, it's powered by this wire with a bend in it that's connected to a spring. That all fits inside the hollow spot we made in the shell. That's going to run through both sides of these holes and inside. And when the spring's wound up and set, it's going to push the lever. This lever right here that fits on the trunk. There's a pivot and when it goes off, it'll make the trunk go up and down. Now this is going to be really tricky to put together. It's spring loaded. It's kind of like taking the back off a stopwatch and having all the gears and springs shoot out. But before we install everything and secure it with the screw, I'm first gonna put on a layer of linseed oil to bring out that natural grain in the wood. I really like how the finish looks on the wood. It's much darker. Now I'm gonna take all our pieces and put our trap together so it looks like this. So here it is, our completed elephant mouse trap with all those pieces put together. Now if our goal was to make a model based off the patent drawings, I think this project was a huge success. It was really complicated. It took me over a month to make it in my free time and I tried to include every detail I could with the mechanics and carving. It's not perfect, but it's the best I can do. Now if our goal is to make a mouse trap that will catch mice, I think we failed. I just don't like the design at all. It's way too complicated and it requires the mouse to cooperate. The mouse has to enter under the trunk, take the bait, hit the lever, then that trunk has to slam down on it. And if you see these jaws, after it slams down, the mouse's body still has to be under there when those jaws close. And I couldn't find a way with the spring to make them close all the way. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try to catch a mouse in the future with some modifications. I have some ideas to make this mouse trap better, but based off the original design, it's not a good one. I can see why this mouse trap's so rare. I'm not even certain if they ever made it. The only one I know of is this reproduction. But if you want to see me trying to catch a mouse in the future with it, make sure you subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on how to make a better mousetrap design, leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I really enjoy it when viewers send me photos of their pets watching Mousetrap Mondays. I also love seeing the fan art, so keep it coming. If you're new to my channel, I've posted over 600 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday and Friday. So if you want to see the best videos on how to catch or not catch, mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.